Deep within the heart of the Great Pyramid lies a hidden room, sealed for over 4,500 years. What secrets does it hold? Who were the first people to enter this magnificent structure and what did they leave behind? Let us investigate how entry to the pyramid was attained. Who got in there first? When and why? We'll walk through the pyramid's exterior entrances, tunnels, and everything. The existence of the famous three great pyramids of Egypt, including the two largest of the ancient Egyptian civilization, Khufu and Khafre, makes the Giza Plateau of significant scientific significance. Discovering how the ancient Egyptians were able to construct these structures, despite the fact that they lacked practically all of the tools that are available to people in today's world, is one of the most intriguing mysteries. Yet, it is just as interesting to learn about the various explorations that were conducted with them as the object, and not simply those of the Giza Plateau. For a significant amount of time, the Great Pyramid of Giza served as the focal point of all explorations conducted in Egypt. It's not that the other locations weren't intriguing, it's just that this particular pyramid was the largest one in the country. Therefore, it was the one that attracted the most attention from tourists. The pillage lasted from ancient times all the way up until the 15th century. It should come as no surprise that the initial investigation into the pyramids of Egypt was not conducted for the aim of conducting scientific research, but rather for the purpose of robbing them. It was grave robbers who were the first people to access these monuments because they believed, correctly, that the pyramids housed riches that they might monopolize. They were the first people to enter these structures. The very first people to do so can be traced back to the beginning of the first intermediate era, which corresponds to the 20th century BC. This fairly brief period in the history of Egyptian civilization symbolizes the end of the ancient empire and the beginning of the dislocation of royal authority. This period also marks the beginning of the Egyptian pharaoh's decline. In the absence of management, as well as dictatorial and centralized rule, the Egyptians faced the temptation to break into the pyramids in order to get the treasures they held within them. Knowing the signs that their ancestors placed on these royal tombs, one can only imagine the audacity it took for them to go there in the first place. We do not have any hard evidence to support this claim, but it is inarguable that the pyramids were pillaged multiple times during ancient times, particularly during these interim periods. Then, time did its work. The pyramids were blamed for their years and they became damaged as a result. The pyramids' entrances eventually became inaccessible as the sand began to bury the paths leading to them. The Egyptians themselves became confused about their location, which led to the beginning of the site and later the Arabic eras in the country's historical record. And as we last left off, we were in the 9th century. In this location, Caliph Abdullah Mamun will make his entrance. The Caliph Abdullah Mamun makes an attempt to penetrate the huge pyramid of Khufu in the year 820 after being convinced that he will find a vast deal of wealth inside. At this point, he is aware that the entrance to the pyramid is located on the north face of the structure, but he is unsure of the precise location. After that, he pierces a second hole, a little bit closer to the ground, and this one will be far wider than the first entry. This new gallery will terminate at the big gallery of the pyramid, which he was free to explore at his leisure, despite the fact that he did not come across any treasure there. Upon arriving in Egypt, Caliph al-Mamun issued the order to unveil the Great Pyramid. We endured unimaginable anguish and significant exhaustion before making it to the interior of the pyramid, where we saw that it was riddled with steep ramps and pits. The path was fraught with danger. At the very end, there was a room that was approximately eight cubits on each side and was shaped like a cube. As the lid was removed from the marble vat, the only thing that was discovered inside was a decomposing body that had deteriorated over the course of several centuries. The vat had been placed in the center of the room, after that, Al-Mamun gave the order to not open another pyramid since the cost of opening this breach was, as far as we're able to ascertain, exceptionally significant. That's all for today's video. We'll be right back. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.